Well, folks, welcome to another episode here at the channel. I'm real excited for today's review for a couple of reasons. First off, we are checking out a knife that, to my knowledge, has seen almost zero airtime on YouTube, and that is the Swamp Rat Rodent 6. That's right, folks, we got a Swamp Rat here in the Blade Boot Camp, and we got the Rodent 6 here. And the other cool thing, and the thing I'm excited about, is that this was sent to me by one of our awesome viewers, Jesse. Jesse, thank you so much for sending me this blade so that I could test it out. Uh, Jesse's been a part of the channel and just watching, you know, and just a regular viewer, just like a lot of you guys, and he owns this swamp rat and he was like hey you want to do a review on it i haven't seen anyone else do a review and i said sure let's do it so uh, he's let me sit on it for several months now i've had this in the blade boot camp for a long time because i really wanted to get some really good hard use on this knife so uh, in this review we're going to test out this uh basically um you know it's a kind of a, a lower price bussy this is in the bussy group you know there's bussy knives or swamp rat knives and then there's scrapyard knives so uh this is the swamp rat rodent six with kind of the the theory of being a survival tactical knife. So we are going to do some, in my limited skill ability, some tactical tasks with this knife, as well as a bunch of survival tasks. And we're going to see overall how this Swamp Rat holds up and whether or not this Rodent 6 is going to be a good survival slash tactical blade for you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start testing out this blade. All right, I'm going to take this piece of wood and this Rodent 6, and I'm going to make a simple piece of a booby trap you know, or something like that that you'd be using either to defend yourself, or possibly catch game. I'm just going to make a spike on the end, and I'm going to do a simple notch just to see how this Swamp Rat uh, Rodent 6 can handle it. So let's get to it. Let's look at some of the basic specs here on this Rodent 6. Now the first thing is that it's made with SR101 uh, tool steel. It's a fine grain tool steel, so think D2, but much you know finer and much more refined, and a lot tougher from all of my experience with this. This is gonna, I haven't seen any chipping, rolling, or dulling with this. Uh, and you know, knives that have D2 that I'm putting this through would have had some you know edge damage that I would have had to maintain and touch up. So this is a very, very tough fine grain tool steel, is what you're looking at with this SR101. Uh, and then we're looking at a black traction coating on here. We are looking at 0.2. 265. That's right, over a quarter inch thick, just a hair over a quarter inch thick on this blade with a very high saber grind, almost a full flat grind. The grind is all the way up here. Uh, you got that real nice belly. We're looking at a weight of 16 ounces, so one pound for the sucker, my car to handle scales. And you're looking at a blade length from the handle. Um, handle scales to the tip of six and three eighths and then we're actually looking at a cutting edge of six inches even so uh, those are just a few of the basic specs usa made uh, on this rodent six all right time to go ahead and look at the sheath here on the rodent six what are you talking about that's the knife i know that's all you're getting with this knife is the knife you do not get a sheath when you purchase this blade. So you're gonna to have to make a choice on whether or not you wanna go for custom Kydex, custom leather, or the modular spec op sheaths that we previously reviewed. Uh, I believe this is a little too long for the six inch one. You're gonna to have to go with the eight inch one because this is over six inches on the blade. It will be passing past the, the Kydex. So you're gonna to have to go, if you go with the spec ops modular sheaths that are out there, that again, we previously reviewed, I'll actually have a link in the description below. You'll need to go with the eight inch one because of how long this knife is. But uh, yeah, you're gonna to have to go custom with this, which has pr its pros and cons. Uh, they do work with Brown Industries. Uh, that's a custom Kydex maker. They actually have links at the Swamp Rat, Swamp Rat website. There we go. Um, tongue twister there. 
uh, that you can go over and uh, have custom work done by them or you can use your own custom uh, guy and get custom sheaths done. But if you're gonna get a sheath on this of any kind really, you're gonna be paying $50 or more depending on what you do, custom leather, Kydex or whatever. Even those Spec Ops modular sheaths are gonna be about $50, 40 to $50. So really guys, you're looking at a minimum of about 260 to 270 on this knife. So that's just something to consider. The rating on the sheath is nothing because you don't get anything. So uh, ultimately you'll be able to pick what you want for the Rodent 6, but out of the box, when it arrives at your house, you will not be getting a sheath with this knife. Like butter All right, so quality here on the Rodent 6. I'll give it to you real quick. Uh, I don't see any issues with the quality. The steel is fantastic and super tough and durable. The coating as well that they've picked is holding up very well to all the abuse that I put it through. The handle scales match perfectly. You know, there's no offset or anything like that. They spent a lot of time on the handle scales, on the tubes to connect them. All those things uh, add up to just be a good fit and finish overall on the knife as well as the materials. A great quality blade at five out of five for the quality on the Rodent 6. All right, folks, time for the value on the Rodent 6. Now, when I went out to film this, I checked on the Swamp Rat website, which is, to my knowledge, the only place you can purchase these knives, or obviously secondhand um, from people you know who are wanting to sell them. But to my knowledge, there's no sites that carry them. Uh, and so I'll have a link in the description below to the Swamp, Swamp Rat website. And uh, basically, Swamp Rat uh, is gonna charge you $208.95 when I went on their website and looked. So that is something to note there. And there is a wait time uh, depending on whether or not it's in stock, out of stock, they're in production, not in production, they kind of go in waves. So it's just something to note, you, there may be in stock or you may have to wait a little while uh, to have them make one for you. So just kind of know that if you're like, oh, I'm dropping the money today, you may or may not have to wait a little bit of time before this gets actually shipped to you, just something to note. Uh, so at $208.95, for just the knife, as we talked about, you're not getting a sheath. So when we really consider this, I'll be generous and, and call it 100, or excuse me, 270 would be pretty reasonable to get some sort of custom Kydex or leather. Uh, we're looking at a lot of money for this knife. Uh, I think the steel is there. I think the SR101 is a great, super tough steel. It's my first run in with that steel, but it's really performing well. I'm a user. I mean, if you wanna know more about that, I mean, it's basically, uh, what's it called, a, a super fine grain tool, tool steel. So similar to D2, but I'm sure a lot better than D2. If you wanna go into all the details and learn all about it, knock yourself out, I'm a user, guys. Yeah, it's super tough and it's holding a great edge at the end. It sharpens up really easily as well uh, for what it is, again, being a, a, a higher end tool steel. So uh, with all that being said, um, the value I'm gonna give it a, a four out of five on the value for the Swamp Rat. You know, if it came with the sheath, and even if they charged us some more, you know, like 240, 250, uh, and it came with a good custom Kydex sheath, I think that would be a little bit better than us having to go out, spend the money to ship it, spend the money to go buy stuff, and you know, just all that, it, it can kind of be a headache. So uh, anyway, that's my point of view. That's where I'm coming from when I'm giving the value rating on the road.
All right, time to now look at the handle and give you the overall ergonomic rating on the Roden 6. Now these are my Carta handle scales, really nicely done. I love the ribbing on them and you got that real nice palm swell and then you got these hills and valleys. They, they really spent a lot of time on the handle scales. They're uh, pinned in with hollow tubes through so you could do, do, la, la, do a uh, loop lanyard system if you wanted to, kind of like uh, if you're thinking like of a saber guard, and then that would really keep your hand in place and you know no one could pull the knife out of your hand, or anything like that. There's just lots of options with that handle. So I like all of that. You got the exposed tang out the back for non-lethals as well as that lanyard hole back there. That's all good. You got a good guard here, uh, you know, that would definitely help keep your hand from sliding up with all the stabbing tasks that we've done. It's kept my hand in place. I've never wanted to, you know, go over and accidentally cut myself, which is really important, you know, in a fighting situation. And again, this has the idea of being a survival slash tactical knife or fighting knife. So that's all, everything about that, the idea is good. The execution, not so much. Because here's the deal is particularly on the survival aspect, actually using this in the field for bush tasks, survival tasks, batoning, chopping, carving, whittling, you're making spears, you're making booby traps, that type of thing with this knife, you're having to make a fire and survive the night, you know, before your buddies pick you up, whatever. Uh, there are some issues with this handle. The first is this, is that when you're holding it back here in the natural grip without using that finger choil behind the guards, when you begin to do hard cutting tasks, there's a hot spot that gets created right here on this hump. There's just something about that there. Maybe it's the lack of micarta right there. Really started to wear out and fatigue my hand almost right away. I noticed it within about two minutes. I was like, yep, there's a hot spot there and that's only gonna get worse the longer I use the knife like this. So then I said, okay, well maybe if I choke up, that'll go away. So I tried to choke up and this is the problem, which I'm sure a lot of you were thinking, when you use that finger choil, this guard bites right into your palm kind of a soft spot right there. Your webbing of your hand bites in real hard and it's real hard to kind of get a good grip. So then as you go and start cutting with that, then the guard starts digging into the webbing of your hand and creates another hot spot. So basically, if this guard was gone, I think there would be a lot of help. And I know a lot of people grind that guard off. I'm dropping $200 on a knife. I better not have to be grinding nothing. Uh, just my thought there, but whatever. Uh, anyway, the, it makes the finger choil basically redundant and I can't really use it for longer than about a minute before my hand really starts to cramp and hurt the webbing of my hand and then I want to go back to this back grip and then it starts hurting the back end of my hand. So no matter where I use the knife in woods tasks, particularly of any type of fine cutting of any kind, again, spear making, notch making for triggers or traps, or again, feather sticks and shaving for a fire, any type of task like that, you're gonna feel it in your hand within about two to three minutes. And it's not gonna be very enjoyable. That's bad. Now, if we're talking about the tactile as tactical aspect, it's a little bit better. The guards work great. I have no real issues or complaints with that. The traction and ribbing that they've done on the micarta handle scales really help kind of keep it into place so you're not, you know, accidentally loosening it or the knife size you're, you know, stabbing is wanting to spin in your hand. We've had experiences with that with other, you know, more rounded handle knives. So that's not the case with this knife. It's really locked into place, but then you're wishing that you didn't have that finger choil and the blade was just up against the guard. So all that being said, Guys, I'm not really digging the handle on this Rodent 6. I don't get it. So uh, it either should have not had the finger guard and then you probably could have used the finger choil without too many issues and, or brought the edge back and then at least you could have done some better cutting tasks, but again, you'd still have that hot spot. So guys, I'm giving this a three out of five on the ergonomics for this Rodent 6. Well, folks, it's time for us to bring this review on the Rodent 6 from Swamp Rat to a close. You've seen it in action. You've seen all the things that it can do. We've talked about all the different aspects of the knife. And so now i got to finally wrap this up and give you my likability and my recommendation on this blade. Would I recommend this to somebody? And who would I recommend this knife to? Well, to be honest, guys, when we talk about the price point uh, and everything that we've seen here, really what kills this knife for me, it has high potential. But for me personally, to be able to recommend it to somebody or for my own personal use, uh, it, the handle kills it. The way that they designed the guards with the finger choil and just how the humps and different things like that uh, interact to create hot spots throughout the entire knife, no matter how you hold it when you're doing any type of woods use, just makes it 
not very desirable for me. Now, it's a good, very hard use fighting knife in that sense because uh, it is super thick. You know, you're going to be able to do prying. It's definitely got a fantastic tip, you know, for that stabbing as well as those guards really do keep you locked into place and the handle traction so, that we've already talked about. So that's all good. But when we start talking about a fighting knife, if that's what, you know, we are using this for, there are other knives out there that uh, will be able to do the exact same task. They're even a little faster in the hand will give you even better traction. So again, uh, on a survival aspect of it, it just doesn't get the job done because it hurts your hand right away, in my opinion. And my, from my use, it really you know fatigues my hand. Then on a fighting side of things, yes, it can do it, and it's very, very tough. I mean, that's if you're going to ask me, hey, what does this uh, Swamp Rat have going for it? It's basically almost indestructible. I don't know what you would have to do to, to you'd probably have to like stick this in a door jam and just like hit it with a sledgehammer over and over again. And even then, I think this would probably still hold up to the use. Um, so uh, uh, in that aspect, toughness, it absolutely, you know, is phenomenal. The steel, fantastic edge holding capabilities and toughness. But when it comes to overall design, particularly on this end, guys, this whole handle, it just falls real short for me. And particularly at that price point, I, I don't know who I would recommend this knife to. So uh, guys, I'm going to give it like a likability of, I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I really, you know, wish I could do it better, but like a two out of five. And it's been a long time since I've done a video like that, two out of five. But uh yeah, I just, I don't know who I could recommend this knife to, and I don't know who would enjoy using it for actual, as their knife that they drop 200 plus dollars with a sheath, you know, on. So uh, I am, because of this rating, I'm definitely going to be purchasing here in the future another Swamp Rat that's kind of more of a just normal survival knife to see how that one performs. I'm kind of looking around at some other different designs that they produce because I do believe that that this does have very high potential if there are some differences with the handle and obviously no top guard, and they definitely do make some other blades like that. So hopefully here in the next maybe six months or so, you'll see another Swamp Rant and maybe that one will perform a little bit better. But I think the idea is there. It just wasn't executed very well and particularly with the handle. So uh, guys, with all that being said, I hope that this video has helped you out with your purchasing decisions. As always, check us out on all the relevant social media. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. And as always, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.